Yeah, we're at the track covering the sport of kings. Coming up in this week's show, the Barbados Midsummer Classic result puts the brakes on Mercedes, the Triple Crown seeking filly at the Garrison Savannah. In Jamaica, the dominance of leading trainer Jason Da Costa continues with more feature race success. Stakes wins up north for the Barbadian superstars, jockey Patrick Husbands in the My Dear Stakes at Canada's Woodbine, and Safi Joseph Jr., whose barn keeps turning out winners in added money races. And in the UK, a thrilling finish in Saturday's main event, closing off the popular July festival at Newmarket. Plus the usual check-in on other Caribbean successes in North America. Our opening story coming up from Barbados. Nine runners entered for the Midsummer Classic second leg of the Barbados Triple Crown Series. The top three finishers in the Triple Crown first leg Guinness in April, all back, including the winner Mercedes, coming off a two and a half month layoff during which she had surgery for a chipped bone in her leg. Top jockey Ricky Walcott aboard for trainer Richard Dean. There's a field for the ninth furlong run for 20,000 US dollars. The betting makes the top contenders luscious, the three horse runner up in the Guinness, a six to one bet with that potent 2022 Triple Crown winning combination with Hurricane and Tonya Bishop riding for Eddie Walcott Jr. Number six, Mushara, third in the Guinness and second in the Midsummer Prep Breeders Stakes and Trophy, the 72 second favorite with St. Lucian Eric Daniel aboard. The seven horse Mercedes is the four to five favorite. And number nine, Showtime, who won the early June Breeder Stakes and Trophy, is a six to one bet in the com box. Here's Dean Springer's call, picking up the speed finish, Showtime in front. Showtime has decided not to take any prisoners as a front by about five lengths with just under a circuit to go. Luscious is second. Then on the outside, Heroes Day Race is third. On the inside, Queen of the South between horses is San Antonio Moshara towards the outside. Makosa Princess is on the rail. There's a break of a length and a half to Papillon and Mercedes is still the back marker. The half completed in 51 and 1 as they're around the far turn and head up the hill and uh, it is short time in front by now two to three lengths on the outside luscious races second then the, on the outside of luscious there goes heroes day more shara's begun her run makosa princess under the pump queen of the south is next ricky walker starts to run through the gears on mercedes six and one seventeen and one they come to the quarter pole and the leader is short time still the leader on the outside here here comes Mercedes, but she's running very wide. Shed Queen of the South is going to split horses, and there are no more turns in the midsummer. And it is showtime trying to make every yard a winning one in the front and the right hand drive. Queen of the South trying to close, but showtime from go to war to the winner circle in the midsummer Creole Classic. Delano Lopez's vigorous ride repels the stout late race challenges of Queen of the South and Luscious to claim victory. Kenny Joseph, the breeder, owner and trainer, gets an early birthday gift. He would turn 34 years old four days later on Wednesday as he celebrates his first victory in a three-year-old classic. And Jockey Lopez, his second, following his score in the 2020 derby aboard War Eagle. By Show Me the Money, out of the holy nightmare Lady Knack. Showtime, really gutsy here in the Midsummer Classic, winning by a length and three quarters at six to one odds for his connections, including groom Don Davis, chased by Queen of the South and Luscious, the favorite Mercedes fourth, one minute 55.60 seconds, the winning time for nine furlongs. The Thoroughbred Racing Hall of Fame stakes was the weekend's main event at Jamaica's Caymanas Park. Trainer Ian Prasad eyeing a third consecutive win in the six furlong sprint following scores by Father Patrick and the reigning champion Jordan Reigns. Jordan Reigns, the 2022 Mute Mile third placer in this field actually as a 4-1 to one bet. But it's not easy to top champion and leading trainer Jason Lacosta, who has four of the six starters here, including the favorite I Am Fred challenging for the lead and the second favorite. Is that a fact? The five horse within three lengths of the lead. So the battle continues up front with sensational move and I Am Fred passing the three glued together. They're about two lengths in front of is that a fact racing in third? Then comes Jordan Reigns. Behind Jordan Reigns, that's Madeline Sunshine. And way out of it, she's, she's my friend there at the top of the lane. Sensational move. And I am Fred there, still matching stride. Sensational move. Stubborn. And also coming on, here comes 
Is that a fact? Bursting in between horses and now. Is that a fact? As assumed the lead coming to the furlong pole. Is that a fact? Begins to sprint off with this one. Is that a fact? Sprinting away. Still holding second. That sensational move. Coming up the rail for second now. That's Madeline Sunshine. It's Kevin Burnside on commentary. The consistent is that a fact? Relishing the 112 pounds, including claiming apprentice Shavon Townsend for the U.S. bred four-year-old Colts' fourth win in eight starts this year. He has not been worse than second in any outing in 2024. Three weekends in a row now. There are stakes or trophy success for leading trainer Da Costa, who, by the way, logged a double at Thistledown in Ohio last Thursday. Champion owner Carlton Watson's Is That a Fact wins the Thoroughbred Racing Hall of Fame stakes as a 9 to 5 bet by 5 and 3 quarter lengths over Madeline Sunshine in a Da Costa 1 2 finish, 112.56 the winning time for six furlongs. 24 hours later, Da Costa would also land Sunday's main event, the PW's Choice Trophy race. Robert Halladine steering the 2 to 5 favorite, motivate me, baby, to an unchallenged gate to wire 4 and 3 quarter length win. The first victory this in three starts for the Robert Thomas-owned three-year-old filly. To those Barbadian Thoroughbred Racing Giants now based in North America, let's start with jockey Patrick Husbands. 51 years old now, but still flying high at Canada's Woodbine Racetrack with big added money wins. He is aboard the 1-2 to two favorite bullet here in Saturday's $125,000 My Dear Stakes for two-year-old fillies. About to go in chase of the 10-1 to one bet, Carlisle Bay, ridden by the outstanding Emma Jane Wilson, who recently surpassed Hall of Famer Julie Crone as the all-time highest earning woman jockey in history. Going away, Carlisle Bay, race clear, bullets run past obliging, and bullets swooping on this leader. Carlisle Bay are half to bullet, and they've run three or four in front of Supergirl making ground. Ambitious Lass running on, but bullet hands and heels here, Patrick Husbands, and goes up on the outside to go and hit the front. Carlisle Bay, the rail there, four in front of Supergirl, and Carlisle Bay trying to make a race of it, but bullet opens up a length and a half in second place in Carlisle Bay, and now bullet showing just how strong she is wins them idea by three or four lengths. Bob Geller on commentary just over two months into the season and eight stakes wins already at Woodbine for husbands. No rider has as many stakes wins as he has and Bullet, he says, ranks among the top two-year-olds he has ridden. Trust me, she's one of them. As they say, you know, from being on her for the last four times, you could do anything with this filly. You could go to the lead, you could do anything. She's naturally fast. Making it two wins from two starts. The Grey Bullet by a winding four and a quarter lengths in the My Dear Stakes as a one to two favorite for champion trainer Mark Cassie, giving husbands a 374th career stakes tramp in North America. 104.85 the winning time for the five and a half furlong sprint. Meanwhile, Florida-based Stafford Joseph Jr. continues, like Patrick Husbands, to splendidly represent the broken trident on the continent. The 37-year-old is currently the number seven ranked trainer in horses' earnings in all of the USA and Canada. Those earnings surpassing the US $7.6 million mark after five weekend wins, including the Azalea Stakes at Gulfstream Park in Florida, where he also had the favorite R. Harper Rose. But Peter Yellow in the combox watches the stablemate Hall in ice, surging up for the win. They round the far turn, 5 16th from home. R. Harper Rose has the lead. Here's the barn buddy. Hall and Ice, short move on the outside and up to challenge for the lead. In between horses, Stiletto Heels. Underway from the back is Candy Gray. Musia down at the rail is still patiently handled by Perez with no place to go. R. Harper Rose trying to get out. Now Hall and Ice has taken a clear lead. R. Harper Rose throws up the white flag and Hall and Ice set sail for the money. Four lengths to the good. Musia is now second. Candy Gray down the center. R. Harper Rose backpedals and backpedals badly as Hall and Ice draws off smartly. Hall and Ice, the Arkansas bred daughter of Cold Front, running up the score under Abisael Jaramillo. They win the Azalea. Hall and Ice stuns the Azalea field by nine and a half lengths on the jockey Emisael Jaramillo for a Gulfstream colony leading fifth stakes win for Safi Joseph, clocking 122.63 for seven furlongs. Safi had entered the weekend coming off a win on Thursday, Saratoga opening day in New York in the Skylerville stakes with a 44 to one shot the Queen's MG. Let's wrap the show now with some British racing. The popular July festival shown on Sportsmax ended Saturday with the meet's richest event, the July Cup Group 1 at Newmarket. A thrilling end to the six furlong sprint. The big favourite in a share in in the hunt, but a rousing finish by the experienced jockey William Buick on the far side. 
gets the job done narrowly for trainer Jane Chapelham. Over on the far side, Keena Ross amongst horses, Art Power and Millstream. Jasur in his Sherrod under strong pressure, swing along Millstream and Art Power, then Badreen, Kin Ross and Van Dijk. It's still right in the balance and Millstream over on the far side with swing along. Van Dijk trying to close off, Millstream and swing along, go for the July Cup together, it's Millstream! Second year in a row, a woman trainer wins the July Cup. Jane Chapelham triumphant after Julie Camacho's score with Shaquille in last year's renewal. Millstream at 11 to 1 odds wins the £600,000 July Cup by a neck over the 22 to 1 outsider swing along, clocking 110.90 for six furlongs, giving jockey Buick a milestone 100th Group 1 victory. Before we go, an update from Racing in Guyana, where the six-year-old Easy Time tuned up for his title defense next month of the Guyana Cup with a victory at the Port Morant Turf Club Caricom Meet. And for a weekly tally of Caribbean wins in the USA and Canada, I can tell you that since our last show, I've counted 76 victories, among them double stakes trams for the TNT jockey Pravin Badri at Assiniboia Downs, where the Barbadian jockeys Ronaldo Cumberbatch and Antonio Whitehall also scored stakes victories. The Jamaican riders Garfield Gordon and Blanford Stewart had stakes wins at Grand Prairie, and the TNT jockey Karen Kelawan had four wins at Hastings. We've been at the track covering top stories and exciting races in the sport of kings. Check us out again next week.